How do you start from scratch and build a socket head cap screw with a hexagon cut, chamfers, and real threads? Coming up. Hey, Tyler Beck. In today's tutorial, we're talking about this socket head cap screw. So if you're new to this channel, I make tutorials that help you learn and grow how to do stuff in Fusion, 3D Print, and other CAD systems. My background, I'm a mechanical engineer, and I've been working in the CAD space with Fusion, and SolidWorks, and Inventor, and other tools for the last 15 years. And if this video is helpful, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you get notified when the latest tutorials come out. Let's get into it. Let's do a very quick run through of the interface of Fusion 360. First, you've got your main data panel, and this is where you can see files that have been shared with you as well as all the files that you're creating. You can start a new project, and within a project, this is where we can upload or import files or start a new folder and further manage our designs. On the left, you have a browser. You can see the file name. You can see what's active when it comes to multiple components where you can select each one and make it active. You can expand and look at bodies as well as select this visibility control. This main command bar up here is where you can change between the different workspaces. You can do a lot in the design workspace where you're creating solid geometry as well as doing assemblies. But this is where you can access the cam space, generative design, simulation, and the rest. The timeline down below allows you to track your order of operations as well as go back and edit and reorder features as needed. Clicking a new tab allows a new design or new file notifications, the extensions, as well as job status will let you know if you're working online or offline. The help menu can be found here where you can search through existing tutorials and helpful topics. The preferences menu, of course, lets you control your entire experience with Fusion. It's worth noting down below these display settings can adjust your visual style, whether it's shaded with edges or wireframe if needed as well as controlling the different camera views and visibility, the ability to zoom and fit everything to the screen or zoom in on a specific window, or to turn on the grid when sketching, as well as the ability to control multiple views or a single view. Here's the socket head cap screw that we're doing today. And you can download this if you wanna follow along or you want an example model if you go up to insert. McMaster car and the one we're doing today you can stretch this 912-51A052. Select product details. Come down, you can look, there's the drawing, or you can also save out the 3D model. It's the 3D step file. That's the one you want to hit save, and that'll open that up right within Fusion. Okay, so this is the one we want to model, and a little bit about the strategy. It looks like we'll want to do the threads last. We'll do this simple extrude, a simple uh, cylindrical extrude, maybe cut this out, add a cut or a trim here it's going to be called a chamfer so we'll chamfer these edges and then apply the thread and because this is a beginner tutorial we're not going to practice manually creating threads but i'm going to teach you a trick that lets you do it really fast all right so i hit this new tab new design it starts a new design in fusion i'm going to check and make sure that my document settings are the ones excuse me, the units are the ones I want. So I'm gonna to go to inch. Let's start a sketch, all right? So you come up to sketch, hit that button, planes, front, top, right. I'm gonna start everything on the front plane today and I'm gonna use the origin at the center of everything. That keeps all of my reference planes right in the middle and that can help with more complex parts later on. So the first thing we're going to do is going to extrude a circle. So I place a circle found up here on the sketch toolbar. I'm going to hit D for smart dimension. I'm going to select this edge, hit D and place it. And now we can place this diameter dimension. Looks like it's 0.06 inches. Type that in, hit enter, scales everything. I'm going to fit it to the screen. 
by double clicking on my mouse or coming down using that fit tool to zoom everything to the screen. You can also hit your view cube and that's very helpful to realign your views. Okay, I'm gonna hit extrude. So I'll come up, I can finish the sketch and hit this first extrude option here. And I'm gonna rotate a little bit so I can see what direction it's going. You can drag it, but preferably you just come over to the distance that you want and select or type in the value. So it's 1 8th of an inch, one divided by eight. Fit that to the screen. All right, so now I want to extrude this second cylinder. And one thing that you can do in Fusion is you can always sketch on planes or on faces. And it's worth noting when I select this face and hit sketch, it's gonna look straight at it. And if you want it to, anytime you can hit this look at with a sketch. So if I get off, you know, rotate in a weird way, you can hit this look at, it'll look right at it. And we started a sketch on this face. Now, are you stuck sketching in the face? No, you're not. You actually can sketch anywhere on that infinite plane. That's one thing I've heard that question a bunch from new users is, can you sketch anywhere? And you absolutely can, as long as it's even with that face or planar to that sketch or to that face. So I will sketch out this bigger cylinder, hit D, dimension it, and now this is gonna be 0 0.096. Hit enter, and we're gonna extrude this. I'm gonna hit E on the keyboard. That's a shortcut for extrude. And I'm gonna be sure to extrude both profiles, not just this outer rim. We're extruding a full solid for now. Good rule of thumb, extrude solids, and then do your cuts later, and then do your fillets and chamfers at the end. It's a good rule of thumb. You don't always have to follow that, but that does help. Okay, so how deep is this one? 0.06. Great, so this is looking better. It's looking kind of like our socket head cap screw, right? So now for the tricky hexagon. All right, so if I come up to my create options, I don't see it there. So maybe it's in the sketch, but if I hit S for search, I can start searching for a hex, it's not there. How about a polygon? It's called a polygon. It lets you do any number of polygons in Fusion. So now we wanna do this hex cutout. So I'm going to start the sketch on this face, type in poly in the search, and I could do, I think I could do just about any of these. I'm gonna do an inscribed. Select the center point, drag it out, and I can use that inscribe to align with this if I want to. But I'm just going to drag that out, and it's six-sided. I could have changed the number of sides with that dialog. And I'm going to dimension from here to this other edge, and this is 0 0.05. Great. Now, what about the alignment? How should I align this hexagon? So I could select this line and choose vertical and I'll line it up and down. And I don't think it matters, I just like to have it fully defined that everything's black, nothing could be moved. Looks great. And now we'll do the cut, and we're gonna cut this depth of, okay, the depth is 0.0375, and that wasn't in the drawing. I got that from measuring in the uh, downloaded model, so. So if you're looking at the drawing, there are some dimensions missing. So there you go, it's 0.0375 for that depth. The next thing we need to do is this rounded edge. And this can be a little tricky if you're brand new to Fusion. So let's figure it out. I'm gonna come in on a plane. I'm gonna use one of my planes that runs up and down. This XY should work great. So I'll select a sketch on that XY plane. It reorients, I'm gonna fit to the screen. And just for visual purposes, I'm gonna use this slice. It's going to um, kind of cut it in half for us just visually. So we can kind of see what we're doing here. Now, what I wanna do is come in and basically sketch a triangle that I'm going to cut. So I'll start sketching. I'll snap to this point, sketch in a little bit, and sketch the triangle. 
Now it's kind of hard to see if we turn off the slice, it's a little bit better. You can turn off your bodies for a little bit so that you can in the browser turn off bodies so that you can see this a little bit better. Sometimes I do that just to make a little more sense of it. I'm going to type in point zero zero three eight eight six inches. That's the edge. So this distance is the same. And I can do a couple ways here. I can select this line and this line, and turn off the projected geometries, and it looks like I may have forgotten to sketch that last line. And that's why I like being able to toggle like anything I've projected or looked at. So I'll dimension this, or I'll select both lines, and I'm gonna make those equal. You can select equal right here. Looks great. And just for reference, if I place this dimension, I don't want it to drive it. This is saying that that would overdo the sketch or over constrain. I don't want to do that. I just want to place a reference that it's 45 and that's what I hoped it would be. Terrific. All right. So if we bring the body back and now what we want to do is a cut, we're going to revolve this cut all the way around in a circle. So finish the sketch, find revolve. And what this is the profile, select it. Now the axis something that runs around. So this round face is the cylinder. I need to uh, rotate about that center. The center's in the middle. I'll select this. That looks great. Preview looks really good. And it's doing a cut all the way around at 360. Hit OK. That looks awesome. Cool. And that was really tricky for me to figure out the first time. Uh, I remember getting that question years ago and just kind of being stumped. And it's Actually, not as hard as I thought it would be. All right, so now let's add some chamfers and then we'll do the thread. So hit S, I'm gonna do chamfer. Chamfer is a nice squared off edge. I'm gonna select that edge, drag it in for preview. Let's type in a value. And I think it's 0 0.006 up top. I'm gonna right click, here's a little trick for you guys, right click drag up and do repeat and do that again right click drag up and you can repeat your last command or you can find these other shortcuts all right so if we come down to the bottom select it point zero zero three looks great fit it to the screen all right so we're basically there now we need to do the thread so i'll type in s search for thread and this is pretty sweet this is amazing this is something we've always wanted i think in cad modelers is the ability to model a thread or to do what's called a cosmetic thread all right so i'm going to select the face that it's going on and it immediately sized it based on the cylinder i have and so this 0 0.06 is correct but um, they call out a dash 80 thread and then the class of thread would kind of be up to us because it's not I don't think it's called out in the McMaster car is how tight of a fit should we have is it a normal fit or a tighter fit so I'm going to go down to this 2a and then right hand being one of the more common threads on uh, you know for this application that should work great if we first do modeled or not let's not do it we hit okay and it puts on this fake thread right? This is called a cosmetic thread. And this is awesome um, for really in the drawing, you're just going to call out a note to the thread. You don't need to model it. But if you're 3D printing or um, you need to manufacture a custom thread, modeling can be awesome. All right. So if we go back and look at that, hit modeled, it actually models the thread for us. And this is something we've wanted for years with different CAD systems. I love that Fusion's got it. Okay, now one little heads up to you users out there. If this is all you're making, awesome, done. Model it up, make it look cool, throw an appearance on it. But if you were dropping in a bunch of different fasteners into a big assembly like this one, do not model threads. It's going to be incredibly painful to work with if you have all that level of detail in a larger assembly. Just a heads up there, it's great at the small level, but if you're dropping this into a big assembly, probably want to get rid of those threads. Just a heads up. Hey, I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, hit that like button for me. 
hit subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.